So the Aquaman movie, well, it's kind of like your drunk older brother that rocks up to your party that he wasn't invited to, yells at your friends for two hours and then passes out in his own vomit. It's kind of spectacular to behold, but it's a fucking mess. So after what feels like an eternity, we finally have the first solo Aquaman movie starring Jason Momoa with his underwater rock star taking this character and uh, good on him for taking on a man who talks to fish and the entire public seem to hate Aquaman's for many, many a bit of a years. meme. He's Aquaman's a bit, a bit of, a of a meme, meme. But Jason Momoa knocks it out of the park. His taking this character is so damn cool. And it's he has unique. So, it is unique and he has such a wicked personality both in front of camera and off camera. So I have so much respect for this guy. Now this film actually popped up on our most anticipated list for this year. Why? Because it's directed by James Wan who did Conjuring 2 and Fury 7. Two films which we thought were very good. In particular Conjuring 2 which was expertly directed at times. So we were quite excited going into this film. We were excited to see what this guy who has a great handle on over the top spectacle and an astute command over his audience could do when he was handed the reins to an underwater sci-fi fantasy superhero epic, one in which a post Justice League ah! Aquaman must return to his home of Atlantis to stop his half-brother from initiating war with the surface. And despite our excitement and optimism towards the film, it's, it's kind of, um, um, like, not, yeah. It's not, it's, look, I don't know what it is. This is just a whole lot of movie. It's a, it's a set piece over there, it's a set piece over there, it's a set piece over there, then there's another set piece and another set piece and another set piece and another set it's piece. It's a whole lot of set pieces held together by a staggeringly underwritten narrative. Underwater narrative. Let's, oh, a no, narrative out no, of depth. No, no, un oh. Yeah, no, that'll do. Seriously, though, if I'm to kind of break this film down and really kind of get to the nitty gritty <laughs> of it, I'd like to call this film a goofy movie. This is the type of movie you can go along to with your friends and you can sit there with your popcorn over here and your drink here and go, hey, this is a goofy movie. It's wacky. It's wacky. Wait. Not much not much of it makes sense, but hey, it doesn't matter because Jason, Jason Momoa's grunting, oh yeah, explosion. And then you an explosion over there and then you go, hey man, these costumes are really nice. There's something quite, wait, hold on a minute. Explosion. Is this a, is this a scene out of a Power Rangers TV show? It doesn't matter. Explosion. explosion. It's a goofy movie. And look, we get that this movie he just wants to be a super simple, fun, extravagant blockbuster. And that's totally cool. Like, we're incredibly game for that. It just seems as though Aquaman doesn't seem to know how to do that well. Yeah, look, I've seen a lot of takes where people have said that this movie is supposed to be some super cool, awesome, over-the-top, wacky, silly, visually striking Flash Gordon meets The Little Mermaid on drugs superhero Bonanza. And yeah, I guess it is at times, but have we regressed to the point where a glorified video game cinematic trailer is the benchmark for entertainment? Because that's what's happened if we start to let movies this hollow pass. Yes, Wan goes hard at this thing, throwing everything he's got at some truly spectacular action scenes with excellent choreography that's clear and distinct and stylish, as well as a plethora of creative design choices in just about all areas. That stuff is all there, and it's easy to focus on that with the cool dude bro persona of Arthur Curry to guide you through it, but man, is the storytelling a disaster. Aside from just how stunningly basic it is, which isn't so much of the issue as complexity does not equal quality, it's more about how many scenes there are, how many moments of action there is, and yet every moment in between is filled with nothing of value or depth. Hey, would you say it's kind of shallow? Oh. Or perhaps it's out of its depth. Ah, oh, st uh, stop, you've already made that joke. Oh my God. Perhaps it's no, in too ah. deep. There's no real tension at any point because every beat is so impulsive and rushed and there's no real attempt to really amp up our investment because of how spontaneous everything is. Explosion. Like, honestly though, count how many scenes are interrupted by an explosion. Explosion. It's a joke. Explosion! Nothing ever feels organically developed, and that's because characters are never given time to communicate unless it's related to the drawn-out plot or how they're involved in the conflict. You won't find anything like this, or this, or even this would you believe, and that makes pretty much every character aside from Arthur and his mum, played with palpable heart by Nicole Kidman, barely feel like characters at all, and rather just things that stand there and say stuff or look cool. And look, I get that this movie is supposed to feel mythic. It opens and closes with narration by Arthur Curry, almost as if he's retelling a legend. So the fact that the movie paints its characters and stories in broad strokes kind of passes off like that's okay. But in the same universe where we have explored characters and their mythos and deconstructed them, 
It just seems unintentional. And it's all good visually going for broke in this cool new world, but at no point is there any attempt made to make it feel tangible or real. Sure, it's cool seeing sea animals used as vehicles and clothes made of jellyfish and all that stuff, but there is zero sense of culture here. All interactions happen between royalty, so there's no sense of civilization or the people on the street that are caught up in this conflict whether they like it or not. So that human element is sorely lacking from the film. They can try and shoehorn in an unearned romance subplot, but that doesn't suddenly make anyone more relatable. This movie is just too big with too little to say or explore. Sure, we get to go to a bunch of cool locations with our characters and see them go through a whole lot of trouble along the way. Sure, we get a really great soundtrack over there. Sure, we get some really great VFX over there. Sure, we get some really not so great VFX over there, but, but that doesn't really matter. Because the things that really matter, seeing our characters go through change, seeing what they care about, what their desires are, and Atlantis understanding what it is, all that stuff becomes secondary to the plot machinations and explosions. Explosions! Aquaman kind of just drowns us with the busyness of its visual scale and the muchness of its mythos. And yet it comes off being so synthetic and it's so adverse to ever letting us come up for air and really take in a moment that it fails to come together as anything more than a totally empty, yet kind of fun, silly, wacky, goofy movie. So, those are our thoughts on Aquaman. Have you seen it yet? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you like this video? Of course you did. Craving more banter? If so, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel down there somewhere, as well as my other channel down there somewhere. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. All those links are down below. And you can also support us on Patreon. Uh, thank you so much to anyone who is doing that already. You guys are amazing. And yeah, you guys have an awesome New Year's and awesome holidays or whatever you do at this point in time. Thank you so much for 25,000 subscribers. That's totally amazing. And I guess you're right. Yeah, we'll catch you next time. Have a goofy day.